what? <laughs> uh, you know what's sad about everything we do? You're yeah, in yeah, dungarees yeah. like a straight man with your crotch Look at open, me. like <sighs> aggressively, confrontationally pointing at me with the fly down and the tip of your uncut penis dangling. Not dangling. Well, I feel like we talk about man spreading, mm -hmm. but people haven't seen what I do. <laughs> the legs break clean off and they wrap around me and I walk down the stairs backwards <laughs> like the garage. <laughs> If you had to walk down, would you do, wait, how does the grudge walk down the stairs? Like this, the spider, like, um, yes. like Linda Blair. Yes. Yeah. How come when, how come how when, come when little Nas X spreads his leg on Saturday night live, it's art. But when I do it on the couch, I'm man spreading. That's a really good point. And how come, uh, 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 I wasn't, uh, <laughs> let's start. Okay. Let's, let's start the, wait. Bang, you know what? Bang. I'm at peace with the pod being low key. You get two cameras, you get my living room, and you get what you get. You get what you get, and we'll give what we give, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. Period, poo, mama, that's on period. Well, here's the thing. We we never expect, well, we did do a trailer that has promised certain things that perhaps maybe we have not consistently delivered on, but guess what? That's life, Mary. Mary, that's life. as somebody who grew up in a trailer, yeah. let, me, let me tell you, never trust what you see in a trailer. I, I'm trying not to look at myself because I do look ravishing in this clip on bang. That is see. not clipped by the way. Uh, you look great. Not clipped, but it's, you have been looking incredible. Well, I just came from the gym, the gym, the gym I just came from the gymnasium. Yeah. It's not a gym when there's a trainer. Uh, no, I came from a room in which I was trained by a person We're trying to be relatable. Okay. Okay. I don't know where to start. Where should we start? Let's go. How the gym? What's your fitness been like? Okay. So my brother came into town. I have a straight brother. So do you. What's his name? Dan. Mine too. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Is he older? Yes. Yes. So we're both named Brian and we're both gay and we both have straight older brothers named Dan. This is, woo woo woo. This you is know, everybody little... talks about God being creative. No, mom. I don't see creativity he's here. He's a hack. <laughs> I, she's being redundant. She's yeah. referencing herself. She's like phoning it in. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, she's dying. Finally. I oh. spit. Uh, to that point, I also, my psychic friend told me that the way that I'm going to die, and this is going to shock you, it's, it's water. Stay away from water. <laughs> you said one step ahead of you, haven't had a glass of water in six years. But I, but I immediately thought of aspirating on vomit because that's drowning. Yeah. Well, a drowning would be pretty bad. And what I've read is it takes a long time to actually drown. What I would want to know is how much of that is suffering? How much of that is your brain awake for? So I think that what happens is when oxygen can't go to the brain, you be, you incur brain damage and you, uh -huh. I think you go into shock. I'm not a scientist, although I look exactly like one, especially. You forgot the soundboard is back today. <laughs> I did forget. So your brother gets into town. His My name's brother. Dan. His name is now, Dan. Now what is his social? <laughs> Who would play him? <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I know exactly. There's like a new, he sent me a picture. There's a doppelganger. So I'll, I'll pull that up later. He looks like some German, um, like newscaster and, and work something. But um, he's a, he's a guy who, this is a person who did a 90 day silent meditation retreat. I want to say that again, 90 as in nine zero days in a row of meditation silently at a retreat. See, 90 days. There's a, there's a thin veil between the worlds of meditating and mental illness. <laughs> it's a thin veil. It blows in the wind. You can see through it. You can almost push through it. And at times, it doesn't even seem to be there. At times, <laughs> they coexist. It's so, sort of like the fish that has the plankton living on it. Oh, wait, what? Like it's a symbiotic relationship oh, yeah. where like the mental instability feeds the the meditation, which feeds the mental instability. You know what I mean? It's a vicious cycle. Depending, it's an on, endless your, loop. depending on your brain, yeah. how your brain works. Yeah. Meditation. You don't want to be locked up in your own brain for 90 days. Well, here's the thing. So yeah, like I, what happens is that you, it's, it's, it's not an escape. It's a, it's running into the fire, running into the burning building of your now insane that I love. <laughs> You're right. Oh God. <laughs> Tits out, running into a burning tits building. Out, that is sweaty how I will tits, go. Panties singed, fresh implants, fresh, <laughs> fresh implants, running because the, the scars will get cauterized, and then you're, 
the the lucite shoe will fuse to the flesh of your foot, Barbie mm-hmm. foot. After it's, there's a lot to win. Well, I'm having the toes removed too. <laughs> if I'm doing the tits, I'm having the toes taken off. If we're doing Barbie, we're doing Barbie. Yeah, give me there the tits. No toes. Take the toes. These will be. These will be physically locked in place. I'll yeah. become someone who can't move their fingers or arms. Mama, who needs to extend? Who needs go, to reach? Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Let me jerk you off. Well, yeah. you could do that. I think a lot of men learn to jerk off in a lot of ways that don't include. This is like, you know, like an in common look in common media when you're like, yeah. you're like a pantomime. You're like, oh, a lot of people are not doing that. Uh, we my, got kids, myself included. Kids fucking pillows. Yeah. Kids putting their dicks in mattresses. Kids scooting their dicks across the floor. Like a dog. Yeah. Opposite. Just, yeah. Um, shag carpet. Shag carpet with a little bit of crumbs from a cookie in there. A little texture. <laughs> <laughs> um, How did you start? Oh, uh, wait. Someone told you, right? Start meditating or jerking off? Wait. What? <laughs> Can't we do both? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody in the YouTube comments of the, the podcast outed the first name of the person who taught me how to jerk off. Why did we take our podcast to the most putrid place on the internet? Well, YouTube. But but mama, putrid goes where putrid goes. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like rotten finds putrid. I am the boom boom putrid. (laughs) (laughs) But no, but... Did I? I don't think I mentioned the name. I I, I really don't think I did because I couldn't remember it. James Gump. Frederica, did a, a, a Jamie or a Jamie Gum ever teach you how to masturbate? So someone um, dead named him. Oh, he's alive. Doesn't dead mean name? Dead name is like a, tra- a name that you were given that you no longer use. For instance, oh. like a, like a George becomes Wilma, like or got it, Like he dead named you. So like yeah. if I said somebody said my real name, no, that's just uh, that's just like I'm deeply uncomfortable when fans go, "Hi, Brian." Well, because if you've never met, if you're not like familiar with each other uh, as uh, peers or whatever, call it what it's yeah. weird. It's like, it's, hi, Brian. I love that lunch you had three weeks ago. Well, no, it's like I gave you this name. I gave you this boundary. And because you found out about this boundary, you want to use this boundary. But that's not available to you. I mean, do you think that's weird? Personally, personally, I've blurred and, and obfuscated the boundaries so much. I, I, it doesn't bother me in particular, but I know it does for other people and it can seem creepy. Can you say happy birthday to Sarah? <laughs> Happy birthday, Sarah. <laughs> I, you just need to. <laughs> Woo! No. <laughs> Honey, you got a big storm coming. <laughs> you could have one or two birthdays, or you could have one big one. Have you seen Wendy Williams on the, the, the TV today talking about Britney Spears? What is she saying? Mary. What is she saying? Mary Pull Dugan. Up. Mary Pull Dugan. Up. We are dropping it in to the episode today. Now By be the way, careful. you can't do that. While I look for the video, can you tell them to subscribe to this channel? Hi, Georgia. This is Katya, and I'm so excited that you're joining us here today at the Bald and Beautiful. Now, as you can see from my clip on bang and very smart blouse, I am pumped up and motivated for you to engage even more with us. So why don't you go ahead and smash that like button uh, and then bop the subscribe bar and then wiggle on over to the thumbs up and then reboot your computer and do it again over and over now more than ever. This is important and it's never ending, but it won't last until it's gone, which could be soon, but not tomorrow. Thank you. So something weird happened today. This is Wendy Williams. Was a rehab where they knew the paparazzi was there every day. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. <laughs> Kitty. Death, Death to all of them. Okay, so capital punishment, invoking. How come when Chrissy Teigen DMs someone to kill themselves that she gets canceled, but Wendy Williams tells people national to kill television. themselves on national television? She says she is the queen of. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. <laughs> oh, I'm I mean, sorry. It's not, we're not too far away from a dystopian future where Wendy Williams is the queen of hearts, literally executioning. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you stubbed your toe in the middle of that dance routine. Death to you and your family. Death to all of them. I'm I think she meant television. shame. I think she meant shame. I mean, I'm not offended by it. Oh, I'm not either, but it's insane. <laughs> It's crazy. It's unhinged. <laughs> I, Wendy Williams should be a real housewife. 
she, it, it's, uh, Wendy Williams. What is she? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I mean, what what is her? What is the archetype of Wendy? Williams? She is unique. Well, Isn't she because she's kind of yes. she's a character. She's, she's a character. A, she's a, she's a very inhabited person with very developed idiosyncrasies. Because she's not Ricky Lake, she's not Oprah, she's not Diane Sawyer. She is some other whole. Well, I mean, at least on her show, she's not pretending. Okay, it's one thing if you're like, our show is about bringing families together. No, yeah. let's bring out someone's mom who fucked their husband. Right. You're right. not really about that. Right. At least Wendy Williams isn't pretending her show's about anything other than commenting on celebrities. She doesn't claim to be the news. No, she does. It's, it's just, it's an opinion. It's tea. Yeah. It's gossip and tea. But her her opinions are sometimes like forming in real time yeah. too. Like yeah. they're so unsteady. Like they're like, you can see the, the, the wheels turning in her face and they're like, what? are those wheels even made of? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like wagon crazy. wheels, <laughs> water wheels. Yeah. Can I just hear it one more time? Absolutely. Where they knew the paparazzi was there every day. How dare you, Mr. Spears, you had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears, death to all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, audience, the audience going, Ooh. yeah. The audience is like, yes, we're back Kill to murder. Execute them, guillotine. I love it. <laughs> Guillotina McGillicuddy. I love it. Yeah. So any backlash from her at this point? I don't know. <laughs> no. I think people are gassed up enough about Britney's situation that they're like, Death can be fierce in the right moment. I mean, yeah, know? actually, death could be kind of appropriate. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was watching the Olympic trials the other day, and then, of course, I thought about Larry Nasser, the doctor who abused all these girls, and I think he should be executed. I know that's crazy, and it's we don't need to talk about, you know, uh, I don't think it's crazy. punishment. You're not the law. You can say what you think will happen. Okay, well, then I would say, um, if I had almighty power, whatever, of judgment, if we're in, like, a um, Mad Max kind of world, mm -hmm. I'd be like, Larry Nasser, please come forward. Samurai sword to the neck. No, I would say death to you, uh, and I would kill him because I don't want I don't want to pay for him to eat any food, taxpayer money to keep him. You know. Yeah, <laughs> it's um. Do you believe in court and uh, capital punishment? Does that mean killing the death penalty? Sorry, because I don't know. The hard thing is you can't ever be sure if they're guilty. Yeah, I really don't know. You can't kill an innocent person. Then again. I, do, I mean, I, if there is, because there's life in prison. Oh, yeah. It's I mean, weird that life, life in prison sentences. is, depending on how you measure quality of life, it's weird that life in prison is less severe than death. Well, yeah, a lifetime of torture is worse than just a moment of relief. Then again. Or release. When you've been in prison that long, if you're in prison for life, I bet your mindset just, you probably just eventually forget about the outside world and prison is your world. And I'm not saying you like it, but 20 years in, but you deal somehow you if, deal you somehow. Alive, if you're alive. Also, if it depends on what prison. Are you in Siberian prison, Swedish prison, or in- One of those um, fun Philippines ones where they do viral videos. Yeah, where the da 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 yeah. <laughs> like that sick, remember that sickening yes, uh, thriller video? I do, I do. Weird, or you get I mean, to, I'm not saying that prison looks fun. No, and it is fun. But that I've never seen organized lit. dancing in a prison before. Like you have watched choreo. an alarming number of prison documentaries. I know you have. I now, are they all, all American? Of Locked Up. Are they American? Or do yeah. they take place in Oh, no, in I've seen all those too. America's worst, or the world's worst prison, seen that. Which which is the worst? Uh, well, the, it, there's levels. Like some of them, they're just like barely flat out. Like there it's is torture. no clean water. Yeah, there's no access. They, they to live them. outside. Where? I mean, some where? of them. I do don't you know remember. Oh I've God. seen a lot of them, but there was a gentleman, he's been in prison for, he once went to prison, I believe, for a decade for something he didn't do. So when he was acquitted, he was like, well, I'm going to do a show about. So people, people wrongful in the world, yeah. well, not wrongful imprisonment. Oh. He was like, people have a right in America to have a clearer idea of what actually happens in prison yeah. so that we can maybe more understand the system that we punish people with. Yeah. Because it's, if you have no way of knowing how inconsistent, horrible, torturous. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, racist, and, blah, and obviously blah, blah, blah. all over the world, they're all different. Yeah. Especially well, for racism t yeah. is prison is times a million. Yeah. Homophobia, transphobia in prison is times Five million. I know. Not to. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, I got some what stories about that. What happens to gay people when they go to prison? A lot of things. A lot of horrible things that happen to a lot of horrible people. But I knew a, a woman, a trans woman who went to prison and was put in a men's prison. She had breasts, but she had her downstairs male business. And, she, you know, you can, and it fill in the blank in the worst way you can imagine. And that's what happened. It's just horrifying. But. Oh my God. Let's, let's transition to a lighter note. <laughs> So anyway, you got bangs. <laughs> yeah, I got bangs. I got bangs and everything changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my brother was in town and 
I, we have, we both have brothers named Dan who are older and straight. Uh huh. We are named Brian and we're gay. So what did you do with your brother for two days? We smoke cigars. What? We smoke cigars indoors. I don't know. I don't know how you hold a cigar. Does your house smell like a cigar now? Yeah, but my house smells like a giant cigarette always. So cigar smell horrible though. Oh no, I love the smell you of a do? cigar. Yeah. If you guys like uh, cigars, comment below. Well, the, the, the aftermath of a cigar is quite pungent, you know, it, uh -huh. it, more than a cigarette, obviously. And I open the windows, you know. <laughs> I'm not, not an animal. animal. Yeah. You do but one was, puff out the window and that's all the world gets. <laughs> but it was, it was fun. We watched, um, we watched movies. We had, you know, he has a, a young child who is the spawn of Satan and, a, and he needed a little bit of relief from. A new I was going to say, did the child come? Are you kidding me? No. What's the child's name? Uh, Graham. I love that name. I do too. I was so happy. It wasn't Thank like G Gillespie or something weird or like. Yeah. You know, My yeah. sister was pitching baby names to me, as you know, and it was quite a colorful cast. What did they say. settle on? It was a weird mix of like really basic white girl names. Or like, really obscure, like Native American names. Uh -huh. It was all over the place. Yeah. It, was a, it was all kinds of wild ones. They ended on. Uh, Manischewitz Guverman. Manish it's Shepard. not Orida. That's potatoes. It's Odina. Adina? Odina. 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 Odina Den. Uh, a demon. Odina Denzel Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Odina May Brown. Odina Menzel. <laughs> yeah. Odina, Odina is gonna be the child's name, and the child should be born in a couple weeks here. <laughs> but so Odina, not Adina. No, O D E N A. Odina. I believe it's a Native American word. It's it's pretty. Yeah, Adina. and also baby Odie. What do we think about that? Odie? Um, I don't Odie's know. Odie's a great name. Odie. Well, my sister had a baby. His name is Owen. I love you the like name that. Owen. I do. Three letters. It's Owen. It's oh, four Len. letters. Oh, math. I don't math. know what just happened. Owen. But it's it's easy, and you don't have to abbreviate it. Owen. It's like um, I'm coming into town. Owen. Owen. Your brother's back. There, he's coming to get you, Barbara. But I love, I love Owen and I love Graham. So what did you guys do for two? You can't just have smoked for two days. No. Well, I got him a room at the Charlie, the Charlie. Oh, where's that? It's in West Hollywood on Sweetser. It's a, it's like a um, secluded bungalow hideaway built by Charlie Chaplin in the thirties or something. No. Gorgeous. I would buy the place if it was for sale. Did he live? He lived. He slept and he ate and went what to the What did he bathroom. do here? Just vibe? Yeah, we, he vibed. We went, out to, we went out to dinner. We went and bought iPads. We went to the Grove. We went, um, did oh, we worked out. Did you get the iPad out. Pro? I did. I'm so jealous. Oh, I brought it. Do I you brought love it. it? Yeah, I'll show it to you. Yeah, it's already. Show, show the material. Oh, sure. We're waiting for our iPad sponsorship. Yeah. We're having to buy things ourselves. It's fabulous. You brought your Cornichons. So it's like, it's really simple and it's like just, it's got a lot of different pages. And it has a, you can change the cover. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the real one. It's fab. And it has a little, wow. Um, yeah, it has the little uh, pencil. It's great. I can't wait for you to p p use that for work. I was, that's, I was like, what is the thing I could use this for? <laughs> working, working. What are you going to use it for? Are you going to do digital illustration? So here's the thing. I don't want to be hunched on my phone, like with emails or Duo mama, Duolingo. Have I talked to you about Duolingo? Tell me. I'm obsessed with Duolingo. Yeah, you are. I'm obsessed. Tell, I'm obsessed. Oh, tell him a story. Tell him a story about we were in the car and the, the driver. Oh yeah, so I'm doing Duolingo. It's a, an app on your phone, language learning software, and you can learn any language you want in the world, including Navajo or uh, High Valyrian from Game of Thrones for fifteen dollars a month, or free with ads. Jedi shit. Uh, uh, isn't there a fake Jedi language? Wait a minute. Klingon. I think they probably have Klingon. And isn't there a Lord of Rings, like Lord of the Rings language? They have that one. Elvish. Wow. I think Elvish. Yeah. Elvis Presley. Oh, <laughs> why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? <laughs> to I guess impress the, people at the con. The con. The con. Yeah. Well, in any case, it's so great. That is the con. Because what Learning is- Learning a language, no one isn't real. Well, me with Russian. It's like so financially- So you would say that Russian is about on par with Klingon? Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about as useful. But so, I mean, it's so like, it, it has this thing that pops up. It says, what can 15 minutes of social media do for you? Nothing. 15 minutes of learning a language could change your life. And it's true. A, a day, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Listen, I, I, we, I think you and I are similar in that we, 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 
We don't agree with the education system, but we like the idea of humans being educated. Well, yes. And it's a travesty and a tragedy that in America, we're so, we're just, we're, we really, we're so told that English is all you need, which well, because it is. is. I know, but it like, is because we it's should spoken be learning everywhere. Others. Mary, you live in Switzerland. You pop out of that womb trilingual. And if, then by the time you're five, you know, 17 languages. If I had a child, which could happen. Yeah. I thought about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A Spanish speaking. Yes. Um, at home. Daycare. Yes. Kindergarten. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Spanish is the first language of America at this point. Yes, like, it is. Yeah. My children will not be some dumb yeah. kid who doesn't speak Spanish because girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. My my friend my friend Eric in Boston, he and his uh, wife uh, raised their child uh, to speaking French in the house only. Mama. French it's school. The biggest French school in the summer. Can, the, yeah. the child's brain is so spongy and I know I've touched it. Yeah. I it's well, You've done everything to a child. Uh, well, <laughs> I did say that on Uno, oh, didn't you I? Did to a baby. I've done everything to a baby. I've done everything you can to a baby. <laughs> We're anyway. going to take a break. <laughs> This summer, get the most out of your travels abroad by learning the language of your destination with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. From ordering in restaurants or asking for directions to gaining a deeper understanding of the culture, Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language addictively fun and easy. With bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world, Babbel is a can't-miss travel essential. I love Babbel. I'm actually using it to learn Swahili because I plan on traveling to Africa. 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school, Babbel designs their courses with practical, real-world conversations in mind, things you'll get to use in everyday life. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Oui, non, ya. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use promo code BALD. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code BALD for an extra three months free. Hi, guys. What's something you wear that you can't see, but it could make or break your day? Tell me. I'm not talking about cancer. I'm talking about underpants. If you guessed underwear, then you'll probably have a lot of good days. Seriously, there's a reason your underwear is the very first thing you put on. Well, for me, the second. The first thing I put on is my IUD. Me Undies believes you should be comfortable at your core. That's why they make the softest undies and fun prints. I'm telling you, they're extremely soft. Yes, I have a pair that says nugs and kisses, and they're little chicken nuggets, and they have matching socks. That's cute. And the other day, I took off my clothes in front of David, and I said, look, and everything matched, and he said, okay. <laughs> So that was good. And oh my God, there's a pair of pajama pants they sent me that are like parachute stretchy material, like like the dream pants of being on a flight. Oh, sleep, sleep, uh, yeah, sleep suit. So good. Sleep suit, yeah. So good, nice. so good, so good, so good. Say bon voyage to the undies you used to know because comfort starts with me undies. Me undies has a great offer for my listeners, not yours, mine. <laughs> For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Get 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee to MeUndies.com slash bald. That's MeUndies.com slash bald. Okay, so listen, Duolingo, I, they sent me some swag. They sent me some t-shirts. Thank you so much, but I want, I want, I want a sponsorship. I want sponsorship. Yeah, I want to do an ad. I want to do an ad in, because listen, what happened is I've been listening to this Russian music all my life, right? Mm-hmm. Or not all my life, ten, last 10 years. And over the weeks, I've suddenly know the lyrics to some of these songs that I never bothered to look up the lyrics you to. You never knew what it meant. <laughs> oh, never. I mean, half of the songs are lip sync to Back at Jocks. I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. So, but just gesturing. Well, you did know? you memorize like the mouth shapes or did you really recognize the, the syntax? I listened to them so much. I just memorized the sounds. Probably how people learn English songs, right? Yeah, like a baby. Like, have you ever, if you've ever listened to a foreigner uh, sing a, uh, oh, Kelly, Kelly, to Kelly, Kelly without, without you. you. Yes, yeah, of that, course. Yeah, that's like me, uh, that's what it would sound like if I were actually singing the Russian. Yeah. And I recently heard a Russian singer, um, she uh, did, a, I put a spell on you and she said, ah, it's so weird. Well, cause you can love the music and not understand the language. And I don't want to know the lyrics. They're all right. horrible. Also, you can, you can still, 
sing it well and have it not be your first language. Yeah. In school, you know, everybody's learning art songs and German songs, you know. Yeah. The, they don't have to sing in other languages. They don't have to speak it. Yeah. They try their best to sound like it, but they yeah. don't have to go out to the world and know the language. Right. That would be a great duet song for us. Mary, a Franz Gall medley would be over. Over. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I love that brand. That April it's, March, um, the band? I don't know. April March is the band. Jake well, Habit. Oh, it, but it, who is who? Who did it first? Was it France Gall or like? I don't know who that is. I only Let's know April March. Feet. Yeah, they sing it in French. Oh, but who did it first? When is it? That was in the sixties. It's a remake, Mama. Fran, France Gall is like was the sixties. I thought and April 70s. March was rather new. Um, the band? Am I wrong? That's so. So Let's It Tombe Les comes like from long time ago. Let's check it out. This Ooh. candle on my iPad. Oh, you don't like it? It's an American singer songwriter who sings in English and French. Let's see. Chick Habit. What's that? When did Chick Habit come out? This is what people come into the pod for, right? Yeah. Fact checking. Fact checking. EP Chick Habit was in 1995, but it's probably a re, or, you know, a redo or whatever. Yeah. See, here on the pod, we're learning every day. Yeah, scribble, scribble, baby. Yeah. Um, but Katya got me this beautiful Tom Ford O wood candle. Is this what you're always wearing? Is that oud why I'm wood. always? Yeah, I do it. I do oud wood or tobacco uh, oud. It oud is a so very good. oud is an earthy, lovely, rare um, fragrance that is extremely, incredibly expensive. Put your lighters up. Ganj is in the house. <laughs> yeah. Now I have one more question before. If it ain't oud, I'm not interested. What are you discovering about the Russian language that you didn't know that you love? Um. Oh my gosh. Well, there is um in not all songs, especially like modern pop songs, are pretty like vapid. And oh, Mary, I have no time for anybody in a song men mentioning Facebook or Instagram. That do you like like? There's a song. How do you feel about like chain smoker selfie? Nope. Or like no. Nope. You only talk in hashtag. Do you know that one? Oh, I want to kill myself. I but <laughs> but mentioning Facebook like. There's a couple of songs that I love so much. I love the melodies. I love the music. It, they're so fabulous. But then it's like the chorus is, Instagram. No, no. That's like words yeah. on address. Like Facebook in VK, which is VK in Russia. No, 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 no. Just say, just make it a metaphor. Not on my you know watch. You what I mean? Like that yeah. is so fucking lame it is lame it's lame mary like i mean a chevy malibu is different because that's kind of a classic the, like, the only time i've liked it is courtney has a song called ugly from kaleidoscope courtney uh -huh. act yeah and she says tap it twice if you like it like but that is a pun and then the double entendre yeah it, you know what i mean like the lyric is sort of about her at night swiping yes through a guy she likes i know this girl has olga buzova has a song called swipe swipe and I it's swipe. Just, it's too literal. Do you like swipe? Do you like swipe? <laughs> Do you want swipe? It's like, ugh. But you know what I mean? It's such a boner killer. Even with like, ugh. But anyways, I just love, they have a way of, their lyrics are like literature. Literature. Do you I like love literature? That. Do you get into literature? <laughs> uh, my, wait, Mrs. McCluskey in the fifth grade, she says, mm -hmm. in this class, we're going to learn about literature. <laughs> did she sell you on it? Yeah. Did you read? She had acrylics. She was 1500 years old with brown leather skin and 14 pounds of makeup in a fried wig. And she was like, literature. Now I have a question. <laughs> when you were in school where you had to read a lot. Okay, wait, <laughs> let me say it again. I don't know what is wrong. When you were in school, did you have to read a lot? You had to read a lot. And then I was like, no, that. have you ever taken a class, like an English class where there is a lot of reading? Yeah. Did you do the reading? Because I will say that about 50% of the time, you could tell I didn't do the reading because, you know, I like to talk and yeah. I like to be right. Yeah. So on the days I didn't do the reading, you would see me sort of sliding <laughs> back into the background. <laughs> I agree. But also I could see how both of you would think that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more curious about other points of view. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking to learn more about it. But then sometimes when I did, when I did the reading, especially, like, well, and I was really good at, not a lot, but I was... <laughs> It, it was your favorite poetry. Okay. Oh, poetry. And it was like stuff that was really feathery. Like, or Edgar Allan Poe, where it was like kind of just dark and, and, yeah. and open bag. <laughs> that God hates bags. Bag booking. I had a good knock, knack for going the next day, and people would be like, I don't know what I fucking read. And I'd be like, well, this is, it's about death. Yeah. I always like got that. That's great. And That's poems are great because they're short. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'll do the reading when it's one page. And I say this as a New York Times bestselling author, Mama. Mama. But if you if you crunch the numbers in that book, poems. <laughs> I know I can neither confirm nor deny that we are doing another book, but if we did, we both always said it longer. Longer, Mary. Longer. A little more, yeah. Oh, oh my God. It's Brandon Owigs. Wow, he is just. Cute. Brandon. Brandon, everybody. Round of applause for Brandon Lim. Yes. He really went out on a limb. Well, Zach Killian, who did my wigs, just dropped off a bunch more wigs for the motel show because we start in August. You, I have, I am truly in awe of your preparation for this, which gives me Thank the vapors you. and vertigo and like uh, the, the heaves, the dry heaves. Well, you know me, Mary. I do know you. You know, I don't know how to act. No, you don't know how to I don't know how to put, I don't know how to, people are always like, how do you find time? I'm like, I don't have time. Nobody finds time. It's just created. It, it, entirely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that starts in, we just did a fitting the other day here in this living room, 16 looks. The shoes you get you the shoe tour itself was an Crazy. MTV Cribs episode. Yeah, they yeah. Were, got like twenty new pairs of shoes. All ugly. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, they're square nice. toes. Um, they're chic. Some of them are very chic. Thank you. They're practical. And then all new outfits, and they're all skimpy little outfits for being worn by the pool in the desert. So the length has to be, you know, those you little like swimsuit cover ups. It's yeah. a half inch between. Does that woman have a shirt on and no pants? Yeah. Or is that a cute little dress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a thin veil. It's a thin going veil. Back to it. You need to be on um, what's her name from something about Mary? Um, Magda. Mag <laughs> I need to be. Why don't you give me some pointers? <laughs> I could take you under my chicken wing. Yes. My burnt chicken wing. But I just like doing shit. Yeah. I like. Yeah. Look, I, 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 and you know, I like complaining a little bit too. I love to oh, walk yeah. in and flop down a bag and talk about how busy I've been. Yeah, it's so like, oh God, the party never stops, but the show must go on. Well, can I just say, I, I'm happy of everything I did during Pride next year. I can't do it again. No, okay, this is, and I'm gonna I interject. I went too hard. I'm gonna interject. I went too hard. I'm gonna interject. So this is the pattern. The pattern <laughs> that Trixie does is that, so she does the, and I don't mind any of this. I'm just observing non-judgment. Um, you do, you like crazy, 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 and then it all but kind of boils to a head and you say, okay, it's say it's July, like October, is clear. I've cleared October. By September 15th, October looks like another version of July. I know. And like you just, it's, but that's a good thing. You just well, do. Well, we're ending June and I did pride stuff from the beginning of May Mary, through June. You, you took pride, fucked it in the ass, put it on the grill, ate it, shot it out yeah. and then served it on our door. Like there's so much. And it was nice. I made a lot of money, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I know we talk about like rainbow washing at pride. If you're rainbow talking washing? about some, Oh, oh, I get it. When yeah. they say like, yeah. you know, hi, gay. <laughs> <laughs> Sashay into a deal today. We are sashaying into deals. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Yeah. Um, but oh. by the way, Meg, Meg, Meg if Stalter. you ever want to come on the pod. She would love to. I, 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 I talked to her. If you ever want to come on the pod. Well, I was thinking more just me and her. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. We got three guys. Um, Meg, Z-Way, and Patty Harrison. Let's make it happen. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I am. I'm just following up. They're down. Look right They're in the down camera. The say it. Meg Stalter, Z-Way, and Patty Harrison. This is an official ask. Please come yeah. entertain It's yeah. hard to follow Sarah Shower, who cracked my shit absolutely yeah, 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 yeah. up. She is so also, good. What? I can't believe on the last pod we, we talked about our, our guest. We our guest we didn't love. Who fucking cares? <laughs> what, is it going to come here and like bore us to death so again? <laughs> so now when people come on the pod, if we don't like them, we go on the next pod and talk about how we didn't like them. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the circle of life. Not not didn't like, and that's not fair. No, no, no. It didn't, was a fine exchange. It was fine. It was, it fine. was fine. It but wasn't a vibe. It was not. We were not vibing. And also, we have a particular vibe between us, and I was under the wrong impression that he was somehow this crazy fan. Like, like who, was, a, who was willing to be part of the vibe. Yeah, I thought it was like, oh, guess what? Actually, this person happens to be a fan of you guys. would never believe it. Why don't you have him on the pod? Right. No. The publicist was like, let's shoe horn. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Whereas like Chelsea, incredible. Yes. But also same thing. Love. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a very specific vibe. I mean, I would love to hang out with her. Chelsea Handler. Yeah. Like I feel course. like that would be a fun time. Of course. Cause yeah. you know, I'll do the weed. Yeah. The other night oh, yeah. I, I got somebody for pride. I got some amazing marijuana products from all different brands. Smokies. Did you I got smokies? smokies? Brandon smokies. smoked them. Do you do? You, I can't imagine you smoking anything. I, I try. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Like, I, I killed a person. I, no, I tried. I, what happened? You I caught the like, house. Well, caught I, the house I was down. like, oh, I want to get like a little buzz, but I don't want to wait for an edible. I'll take this on the patio and I'll, I'll hold it and I'll smoke it. <laughs> 
It's like brought it out there. The weed, oh the marijuana God. cigarette, the marijuana yes. cigarette, the wacky, pre-roll. the wacky tobacco. Yeah, a pre-roll from Drew Martin. Lovely product. Lovely. I product. go out there on the patio. I light it up. It's a low dose marijuana. It's advertised as low dose. I'm like, perfect. Okay. Right. And you know, smoking, I feel like it's not like an edible where if you took too much, you're stuck on the ride. Oh no, no, no. Yeah. So I was like, I could take two puffs and see how I feel yes, and then try again. Absolutely. And it was lovely. Okay. Did it again the next night. Loved it. Burns my throat. Well, it burns it's my throat. It's very harsh. It's By very day harsh. three. You were addicted. Oh no. No, I can't do it. <laughs> no, it's, it's very. Oh, I definitely can't do it several days in a row. Let's say that. Yeah. I used to smoke it all day long. So I think if I did it again, it would be once in a while. I have a strong hay fever response and I learned on the internet that's, oh yeah, allergies. Oh, your allergies are off the chain. So off I've learned chain. that some people react like, um, I had like sinus, uh, I don't, know how, I don't know how to describe it. When you feel like your nose is like full of air. Full of air? You know when you have like a sinus pressure yeah. here? I had that for days. After smoking the so weed My body and, and running and then running eyes. Because oh, it's like an allergy response. Worth it. Not worth it. So maybe I'll do it once in a while, but maybe not yeah. that much. Maybe up th- rectally. But Oh, thank you. So then rectally. I switched to Pop Rocks. I thought you were going to say Poppers. No, <laughs> Pop Rocks. Okay. Brandon, can you get the Pop Rocks? So in, by, wait, wait, wait. It, by, by the... This... By the, this uh, so it's edibles in the form of pop rocks. This is insane. This is insane. This is just asking the children to find it. You know what I mean? Like I'm having a late in life no, no, marijuana no, 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 no. journey. But what if you were at a daycare? Okay. So that brand sent me those. It's pop rocks, 10 milligrams of HVC. THC? <laughs> HGTV. <laughs> How much is, t- I don't know what that is. How so, much gets you high? So I used to take, uh, so a gummy is five, right? I used to take a half a gummy. What? No. And, yes. Half- and that would put me on Jupiter. So now I'm up to like oh seven and a half or 10 even, and I can handle 10. The- so that's a whole pack of 10. I'll eat half. The other night I had a half that. And you'll be cruising. Mama, you know, I'm learning to DJ now. <laughs> I was in here. You were Diplo. Oh. <laughs> you were dead mouse with the thing. I was at Lilhammer. I was at Glastonbury. I was in here playing music. I've been learning to DJ. <laughs> She's I was learning spinning to those tables. Mama. Magic she was Mike, DJ bitch. Jazzy Jeff. Bitch. DJ Jazzy Jeff. I had my Jeff. shirt off. You don't know about me. I was in here. Like, you don't know. <laughs> and then I like had had a second where I had to go, oh, I'm just alone in my house. I got like so into it. <laughs> I was like, like, and the Molly. <laughs> yes, I had some colored lights on in here. You don't know about me. I don't. You don't know about me, I don't me, know girl. you I anymore. stuff going on. <laughs> I got stuff going on. You got things in the pipeline. You got you know, projects in the works. Yes! Oh my God. So um, that was nice. Um, Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Yeah. There are hundreds of companies out there claiming to compare auto and home insurance rates, but there's only one who actually does it. Get a better insurance with Gabby. And I know it because I've done it. Gabby is the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. Because mama, the ballpark, not over here, honey, because gay. Use your current policy to find a better policy, comparing your current coverage with 40 of the top, <laughs> top, don't mind if I do, insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers, all in one place. Use your current insurance information to get started. It's free and they only show policies that are the same or better than your current coverage. Many of them at lower price. Gabby helped me find the right policy. With the way I live and the way I act, I need a lot of things insured because a lot can go wrong. Gabby customers save $961 per year on average and they never sell your info. So no annoying spam or robocalls. Put your policy to the test like I did. Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check out and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash bald. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash bald. Gabby.com slash bald. Hello, it's me, Madonna. Madonna's an American icon and weighs more than one. She's the embodiment of the American dream. Yeah. A woman from humble beginnings who transformed herself into the material girl and became not only the biggest pop star on the planet, but a movie star and the world's number one trendsetter. On an all-new season of Wanderers, even the rich, hosts Brooke Sifrin and Afrisha Eskidmore a Williams tell the rags to riches story of how Madonna me became the queen of pop. Yeah. What makes Madonna me remarkable is that I stayed on top of the four decades while countless other pop stars came and went. <gasps> she was oh sorry me <laughs> i was able to reinvent myself to stay relevant and i did that to surprise my fans and the world again and again 
Excuse my accent, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> Brooke and Alicia bring you the true and shocking story of one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest celebrities. <laughs> One of the biggest celebrities the world has ever seen, me, Madonna. But before she was known to the world as Madonna, she was just a scrappy girl with a dream. Listen, when I look at Madonna, yeah. it's somebody that I want to know how the sausage is made. Yes. I got to yeah. I got to know. The nuts and bolts, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know what's in the what's in the sauce. Truly brilliant. Yeah. Truly invented the pop concert as anyone invented, knows reinvented, uh, yes. evolved, ev- yeah. Married Incredible. musical theater with pop music. Yeah. I mean, it, it, she's truly a Record genius. Record breaking. We wouldn't have any of your faves without this fave. Yeah. I loved listening to how Madonna literally created herself from absolutely nothing. We all take her for granted now, but this show explains how truly groundbreaking she was. Listen to the latest season of Even the Rich, the making of Madonna on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or where you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. Wondery, feel the story. Madonna. Saturday, I had the the <laughs> privilege of um, at Cinespia in Hollywood. Oh yeah, the Priscilla. Which, thing, by the way, which I declined. You should have went. Why? It was so fun. Was it really? And the VIP was off the chain. Blankets and pillows outside of the there? stars with food. Who was there? It was me, Brandon, a couple of our managers, Andres Regal to our left. Yeah. It was a whole little roped off area. Very oh, private. but no celebrities. Oh, uh, I didn't. It's dark out. I couldn't see oh. anyone. That's I was 4,000 people there. I got to walk 4, out. 4,000 yes. people? I got to walk out. Oh. The, the people of Pride introduced me, and I got to give a speech that you heard. How'd it go? They loved it. They loved it. They ate it up. They loved it. They lived. Okay. Uh, one of the jokes David said wasn't funny when I said, um, if you guys don't know Priscilla Queen of the Desert, it's an Australian drag film. I said this film's working title was Dingoes Ate My Tootsie. Yeah, they didn't laugh. They howled. Of course, In the middle funny. of my speech, I turned to David and said, I told you it was funny. <gasps> that was important. probably the funniest joke you told me on the phone. Well, thank you. So you're saying the rest of it wasn't good. No, the rest of it was God awful, but it was all validated by that. Get this air conditioned trailer, ice cold, ice. I was cold in drag. I was cold in drag, which never happens. I went in there. I sat down. I put my nails on ice cold, freezing (laughs) cooler. And then I, um, after I gave my presentation, I go back to the trailer. There's a shower. I got to shower before I go watch the movie. And then I went to go sit down. Bottles of wine, gin, cocktails, candy, popcorn, sandwiches, bagels, all spread out for me. And I watched Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which I hadn't seen in a few years. So okay. good. It's great. Yeah. Guy Pierce. Why did ABBA, why did Australia discover ABBA in the 90s? Because Muriel's Wedding, ABBA movie. Is Priscilla ABBA-ish? Oh, Heavily? yes. Mamma Mia, oh, isn't it? I don't remember. Um, It opens with that. Fierce Charlene number. I've never been to me. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, Sick it's a great. Thing. Movie. They're not gay. They're not gay. The actors. Yeah. No. That's How do you feel about non-gay people playing gay people? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let me just check my bangs. Um, you don't have to answer oh, that. I just need a dab. No, no, no. I want to. I think I you just... might get in trouble for any kind of answer you give. No, 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 no. No. Um, here's the thing. I uh, the acting is um playing a character. So with with gay, it's hard because some actors. Um, <sighs> hi gay <laughs> hi gay okay well there's two there's two things first of all there is homophobia within the industry that prevents um, closeted actors from coming out because of uh, a market appeal uh-huh. right because of the assumption that Bob and Susie don't want to go see um, uh, the, Gary Oldman uh, no they don't want to see Fast and Furious driven by a fag well because that movie's going to be over quick because gays aren't good drivers I know. You think the gay? You think I would believe a gay person drifting around a corner, being like, "Yeah," but guess no. what? Death to all Death of them. To all- <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing: sometimes uh, the gayness of a person, um, like for me, for example, it might be beyond my acting range to play a straight person. Same. You know what I mean? Although, but, I mean. Doing a pretty I fucking, look like I'm on the bait bus. You're doing a pretty fucking good job right now. I'm on now. the bait bus. Yeah. Ask me if I've ever done this before. If your lips were chapped, bam. So have you ever done this before, young man? Uh, no. And you have a girlfriend? Yeah. What's, yeah. what's we're your in love? Yeah. How, what's your name? D- <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> I'm not a good liar either. My girlfriend's name is Daryl. Darylina. Daryl Hannah. Oh my God. Fuck uh, my asshole. Well, 
I feel that in the case of Priscilla, yeah, that was at a time, especially where if we didn't have straight people tell a story for us, it would never get told. Yes. But, but Peaches uh, Christ told me is something interesting. What? Because I said, do you love the movie Priscilla? She goes, love it. You know, Peaches Christ is from a generation of drag queens a little older than us. Yeah, 30s. Like me, maybe not 30s. you, but um, <laughs> she, she uh, I go, well, did the drag queens love Tuang Fu when it came out? And she said, no. Why? I said, they didn't. She goes, well, Priscilla told drag queen stories like, like, like they like were. it really is. Yeah, like they were. And Tu Wong Fu tells this fantasy that we're in drag all the time. And, and they were really trans cartoons. Yeah. So I get, I obviously both movies are important, but from her perspective, I was like, I thought drag queens would have lived. And she was like, we did not live. We loved no. Priscilla. Yeah. We made fun of Tu Wong Fu. Well, because I mean, it's crazy. Like Tu Wong Fu, I think the impact of Tu Wong Fu was a, just a softening of the rigidity of, ge- of masculinity. Uh-huh. In general. Yes, it's especially just because it's that Blade. Patrick Swayze, Blade, and fucking John Leguizamo are willing to fag out for two hours for yeah. millions of dollars. Well, you know, after that, though, they called it Blade Day <laughs> to make it more. But, okay, Patrick Swayze. Noxima Jackson, do you ever watch that movie and go, that's Blade? I'm sorry. Like, that's an instance where I'm like, <sighs> he's great. If we lock people who aren't gay identifying out of playing these roles, we wouldn't have a Noxima Jackson. Yes. So my, my POV is always, if you can tell the story compassionately, Yeah. if we're yeah. at a place in America where if two gay actors did Brokeback Mountain, no one would have seen it. Then it's porn. Right. It's then smut. it's porn. Yeah. Then it's porn. But I think, that, and also it's like, well, there are, you know, trans, there's so many trans actors are out there. There's so many gay actors. It's just, I don't know. It's complicated. I think you should be able to play anything. Um, I mean, it's not, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't have a good answer. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Hard. Like me watching Pose, for example, I was like, if these were cis. No. I, I don't want to use the word passable, but if but these were then, cis passable women yeah. playing these, uh, it wouldn't do as much for me. Yeah. But then you have the, like, you know, so say Patty Harrison, for example, she has a movie where she plays a surrogate. There's no, there, she happens to be trans in real life. But that's just incidental. Right. You're watching the movie. It's a woman, a funny woman. Yeah. It's so, it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because representation is important, but then also like if, if only trans and gay characters are being portrayed by straight people because trans and gay actors are being denied jobs due to homophobia and transphobia, that's a big problem. And of course that is the case. Right. I don't. I'm afraid of saying I need gay people to play gay people. No, because no, I also that's not don't need no. s- only straight people to yeah, play a straight person. No, I need actors to play people. Right. But I need actors to be everyone. Everybody needs to be able to have access to the, to this, the, the acting, yes, you whatever. Should, you, you, know. you should be able to paint the picture and yeah. get the job because you're right for it. Think about how many ugly, fat, white guys there are who are able to just be incredible actors, you know, like you, like so talented at secondary characters, uh, character actors couldn't name their names. You recognize their faces, but they're just so, but they're there. And there's so many of them. So many, so many. Like, well, they fit in so many things because there's so many guys like them in real world. So, know. you yeah. know, those characters are very anchoring. I think in storytelling to be like, Oh yeah. yeah kind of dumb. Yeah. They pull you right down to the muck of reality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you get the Julia Roberts walk by and then you need the, yeah. Yeah. Would you, would you be Julia Roberts or Michelle Pfeiffer? If you could switch bodies for a day, Michelle fucking Pfeiffer. Are you kidding me? No, I'm okay. All right. All right. Jesus Christ. What about you? Julia Roberts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below. If you would like yeah. to be Julia Roberts, yeah. Julius Roberts, Julius Roberts, Michael or Pfeiffer. <laughs> Julius Roberts and Michael Pfeiffer. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. <laughs> Should I get bangs? Should I not get bangs? Please comment below. And thank you for, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Oh, we have yes. our pods, not yeah. always on video, but Hey, we, we always keep you guessing. Uh, we're never consistent, but we're always surprising. And let's just say next year we'll be together a lot and we'll be producing yeah. a lot of media on this channel. A lot of delicious content for you to gobble up each week. Stay tuned to see if she goes missing again. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>